What's up? I'm so happy to be hosting these gentlemen here in my house in Mount Lee from New Jersey. And uh, Beautiful hopefully place. you'll find the content uh, interesting. Yes, sir. Tune in for the Throw Podcast. This money goes spent, I move just fine, trust me. So, so much work for y'all. Elect me to be the dope man serving y'all. You can spend your last five, it's worth it, y'all. Cause so, 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 so much work for y'all. I know this economic depression hurting y'all, but I got so, so much work for y'all. Want the clientele pop and I'm setting up shop and knocking my competition smooth out of the box. To the word can't be removed out of the block and y'all cut like to be removed out of the drop. Oh. Hello, this is For The Thrill Podcast, episode 36, and I am your host, MC Thrills. Co-hosting with me is... A1, stay young, you already know what it first is. First live in person podcast together, and we got special guests, good friend, long time, genuine, genuine person, love this guy, he's a mentor of mine, and um, he's big on photography, Mr. George Cadero. Good afternoon, everyone. It's a pleasure to have these guys here. And um, thank you for your hospitality. Uh, before we get started, can you just introduce the people just a little bit about yourself? Um, I have been a professional photographer for about 25 years. I'm retired now, but uh, still enjoy um, sharing my uh, knowledge and I'm, and I'm grateful for the fact that most of the people that I've mentored have wound up being better at this than I am. And I think that's the mark of of a good, good teacher. You, you always want to put forth more than, than you have done yourself. So, um, so it's been really, really a blessing that uh, photography is something that came into my, my life and that I've been able to pay it forward. Definitely, definitely. Yeah. So yes. um, what made you uh, get into photography? Uh, actually, uh, I got into photography when uh, Josephine, my first wife, Brooks's mother uh, got pregnant, and so I, was just uh, I had uh, I had wanted to take some photographs, and so I went to a store and back years ago with the film, spent a whole bunch of money, didn't know what I was doing, uh, realized that that was pretty pretty good at it, and so a friend that I work with asked me to shoot her wedding, and it kind of took off from there, and after getting laid off from a job. I looked at all the camera equipment I had accumulated at that point and thought, well, maybe this is a way that I can make some, some money. And it was during the days of film, uh, people were more reluctant to call themselves a professional photographer than they are now. <laughs> that, that, that. <laughs> Everybody gets a digital <laughs> camera. Right, I'm a right, photographer. Right, 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 right. You can use all your iPhone, you're a photographer now, you know? Right. <laughs> right. So, um, so that was a blessing in disguise. And, and so I started it from, from there. And... And it just kind of grew, and so here I am. Mm, nice, nice. So that you said twenty five years. Twenty five years. Wow, so, man. but you you was you was a teen, right? Well, <laughs> I wish. <laughs> I wish. <laughs> I wish. <laughs> it was my it was my midlife crisis thing. So instead of going out and getting a nineteen year old girlfriend, I just bought a whole bunch of cameras. <laughs> that sounds good, man. <laughs> that sounds good. What was your first camera ever? The first camera ever was a. Minolta camera. Um, it was, of course, a film camera, and uh, I shot with that camera for a long time. And then, when I started getting into events and weddings, there's a type of photography referred to as medium format, and basically, that's just a larger negative, which allows you, with a properly exposed image, to print larger. Mm. And and so I got into that. And uh, from there, it just progressed. When digital came in, um, I started shooting with uh, Sony, mm -hmm. and been shooting with Sony pretty pretty much ever ever since then. But uh, my 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 favorite go to camera, if I'm running out of the, the the house, will always be one of my Fujis. They're they're small, and they render incredible images, and I just love their. Uh, I just I just love the uh, look of Fuji, so. Mm -hmm. So that's what attracts you to Fuji, the. Uh, yeah, the the, uh, the, the, the look. Yeah, well, the design. It looks like an old camera, but Fuji has something that they refer to as film mm -hmm. simulations. So if you know anything about film photography, there's different kinds of film, mm -hmm. and Fuji has created their their photography platform, 
where you can actually select how you want the image to look based on what that film used to look like. Mm. And, and so that's, that's something that uh, I'm, I'm not that familiar with Nikon, but I know that Sony does, doesn't do it. And that's the other company I, I shoot, shoot with is, uh, I shoot with a lot of Sony's. This down here is, is one of my little go-go to Sony, Sony cameras. So the, the film simulations that Fuji has are just, just great, just incredible. So for anybody that came from film, they can appreciate it a lot more than perhaps you young guys who, when you started shooting, digital was already here. Right, 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 right. right. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Yeah, so um, I remember you had the uh, studio in Philly. When, how, how, how long did you have that studio, and what, what, what time frame was that? That was probably I'm gonna say. 15, 18 years ago, Sheesh. and it was in uh, Northern Liberties, which I should have kept that building and I should have kept that studio because right, right now that neighborhood is hopping, you know, and, and jumping. But when I was there, it was still a very, very much transitional uh -huh. neighborhood and uh, it, it was a tough place to have the studio. Uh, I can remember with all of the renovating, hearing all of the rodents scurrying around at mm. night when I was when I was work working late, and I just thought to myself, "Wow, I wonder if I made the, the right the decision." But uh, going there and opening that studio allowed me to sell my, my car. I would go to a lot of my my, my, my gigs by by either just walking mm. into Center City or by take taking a, a bus, and I was shooting for a uh, company called UpcomingEvents.com, and what they would pay me to do was to go around and cover different events in the city uh, of all types. So, so it was a pretty cool, cool job. It, it opened me up to being able to do a lot of net work working mm. and uh, helped me to pay the, the bills on a consistent basis because they eventually put me on a retainer so that I was getting a constant income every month, which I, which I supplemented through booking weddings and my concert for photography. So that was that, you like your biggest gig at the time? With upcoming it was my steadiest gig. Steadiest gig. Not okay. necessarily my biggest gig. Well, that, that shows a lot when yeah. you say steadiest gig. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. Stable, yeah. stable income right there. Yeah. Allow me to eat every day. Right, right, right. Yeah. Oh, that's but then, you know, you already, you already were at the point where you were getting paid to do what you love. Yes. You know Correct. what I'm saying? So Correct. that's a win right there and so on. So right. That's a big part of success, I would say. You know what I'm saying, at least. And you left Being out a man. word which is really important. Was that? And I always leave it out is that when you're doing what you love you never go to work a day in your life right mm. right, right that's yeah. all we're trying to do here man we're yeah. just trying to create something with what we love to do you know what i mean and 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 eat off it yeah exactly. even if it's not paying as much as my day job right now i'm gonna do it you know what i'm saying until it's like just 10 times what I'm yeah doing, man I love, I'm I, yeah i fell in love with doing this podcast and stuff because look i'm we 36 episodes in we started wow. out, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, very yeah, it's cool. number 36. So uh, when I started, it was um, me and uh, my aunt in North Carolina during the pandemic. Okay. So we went with five episodes, then because she was living with me at the time, right. and she ended up moving back here to Jersey, and I was still in North Carolina, so I started it, doing it by myself through Zoom. Oh, okay. Yeah, so um, and then I um, had Angel on the episode, and um, when I moved to Texas um, is when I called Ange and was like, how many episodes were we, was I in then? Like 12? 30, oh, 30, no, something. 15 maybe? Probably. I don't know, when I jumped on I like and I officially did an episode, it was already 20 something. It was 20 something? 26, 28 or something like yeah, that. Yeah, and then we started doing Zooms. Yeah. So so I would put Ange on the TV and if I bring a, a guest, <clears throat> and then my aunt, I had my aunt too, so we were like, they were cold. Oh, okay. So, yeah. Yeah. so she came back and we did it on the TV. I had the TV on the background. And then I'll be sitting with the guests and we'll all talk. It's pretty, it's pretty cool. Yeah, sure. you really see the progression too. Each episode, uh, especially you know when I started out, know, each episode kind of did a little something different, a little something different. So it's, you, you see the progression. Yeah. I like that. So like at first the podcast was just like based off just to do it during the pandemic right. and um, just me and my aunt just talking about whatever. Right. Um, it's for the throw podcast. There's honestly no niche per se. Right. It would just um, or niche, however you say. It. Yeah. But um. Now, like over time, it's like trial and error. Yeah. So now, like I see it now is, I I uh 
can promote other people. Right. People can promote me, but also is uh, showing the audience uh, new things. They learn new things off the. Because honestly, every time I do a podcast, I learn something new from right. who I'm talking to always. And um, something big for me is creating memories. So like I had my uncle um, Jose on the podcast uh, a couple episodes ago. We shot it in the AC. And, like, we went for, like, over an hour and a half. But, like, having that memory, because right. God forbid you don't know what happens tomorrow, right. is, like, is amazing. And then ever since then, I'm like, I got to keep doing stuff like this. Not just business owners, not just artists, but family and friends. Right. Like, I think that that's important. Right. That's why I did it. So. Amen. Yeah, man. But um, I'm definitely glad you uh, let us come over and to this beautiful home set up. Thank you. Um, what's, what's the next moves for you? What you got, what you got planned? Well, I, um, I just recently, um, got, uh, I, 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 one of my images won a first place award mm. in AAS. Oh, wow. I didn't know that. And a senior, uh, sure a fun. senior, I almost hate saying it because it was different when you were a senior in high school. <laughs> when you're my age and now you're a senior, you're senior now, you get the discounts. <laughs> right. well, the discount, you right. get the discounts when you're a senior in high school, right? They're full price. Yes. So I won uh, first first place for for an image that I took of um, 16 Liberty, which any of you know the Philadelphia landscape. It is the one building that they allowed to be built, or the first building they allowed to be built taller than William Penn mm -hmm. in the Philadelphia skyline. Mm -hmm. And so it uh, it won first first place in Camden uh, County. And so now it is currently being dis displayed up in uh, Central Jersey, mm -hmm. and uh, so so now it's in a statewide competition. And I should find oh, out wow, if, it, if, it, uh, if it wins or it plays. So this will be another. Uh, yeah, so. this this is at another step, and yeah. So wow. so I'm really really ex excited about it. And this is the first time because uh, I'm an art collector, and I've mm -hmm. usually hung, and here hanging in my my house are images. That, that other people have uh, painted. I don't know, well, you really can't see this one back here, but my friend, Diane Herter, uh, actually did that image um, herself. That's an original, but most oh, wow. most everything that's hanging, I finally decided. Yeah, a picture of that later. Right? Yeah, we can do a video and a yeah. picture, we can do a yeah. That um, this is the first place where the majority of what's hanging on the wall is stuff that I created by myself. Wow. So I'm just really, really happy that, that I can wake up, I can sit here and have my morning coffee, and I can right. look around at images I've taken that invoke some really great memories. Yeah, yeah, no, definitely. No, I definitely feel like I, I like it. You have a lovely home, and it definitely gives great energy, like, even just to be here by yourself and be comfortable, and, like, I feel it, like, you could just probably be here and enjoy yourself, you know what I mean? Surrounded by your, your art and everything, so that's cool. Well, and I'm never really alone, alone because I have my two. Oh pups. yeah, you got the you got the bodyguard. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah, we can't, yeah, can't forget. You're yeah, never really alone. Having and Bentley. Really <laughs> right. They're they're just playing a little camera shy as they're snoring off uh, camera. Yeah, they, as soon as we said action, they went into the corners. They were like, "Yeah, we we good." Yeah, I remember when um when Brooks was like when bring when Havoc was like a puppy, and yeah. he would bring him in with. He would show me Addies, and he was doing like I'm like he's showing them all military um, gestures, and he was following. I'm like, yo, that is that is, that's cool. That was pretty cool. So um, yeah, obviously for those of you who don't know, um, again, this is uh, Brooks' father. We talk about Brooks a lot on the podcast. Brooks' um, song is actually the intro music to the podcast. Um, again, um, God bless his soul. Um, so it's been. Ah, man, so how many years I've known you now? Seven well, eight. you've... Well, God, you've known me since... I think I was like... Oh, 17, 16, Yeah, I was going to say since yeah, so high school. Yes, yes. Sheesh, oh, man, I, I feel old. No, I'm <laughs> Sheesh. But yeah, um, Brooks was definitely a big impact on my life. Um, on uh, Ainge Life too. Yeah. Uh, we was all part of the group together. We talk about it on the podcast, but that's just to give y'all a little bit of insight yeah. of how I know Mr. Yeah. Cordero. Yeah, if it wasn't for this guy, you know, that guy wouldn't have been here. We wouldn't have been blessed, you know what I mean, to know him. So, you know Amen. I mean? <laughs> you know what I mean? Definitely, definitely. Um, I was going to say, can you, um, like the stuff we haven't seen, can you tell us a little bit about Brooks' upbringing and how he was so, growing up? Brooks was... Uh, 
he was an interesting kid. Uh, Brooks, Brooks, um, since his mother had a lot of food allergies mm -hmm. and, and, and still does, um, there were a lot of things that we couldn't, couldn't eat in the house. Oh, I just didn't have it in the and house. And so, uh, as, as Brooks got older, he, he developed the same eating habits as his mother. Mm. Cause I would cook stuff that they could eat that I couldn't necessarily eat because I have seafood allergies. So oh. y'all got different allergies. <laughs> yeah, so. <laughs> Child counter, <laughs> yeah. counter allergies. Like, <laughs> everyone's dinner has to be different. Yeah. Cause, Cause baby, Bruce, you want this? No, yeah. I'm allergic. <laughs> Cause Bruce's mother was allergic to pork, which mm. is, I don't, I don't know how you can be born so a no Puerto Bindi? Rican. No, no. How can you be a Puerto Rican and be allergic to, to, to pork? Oh, man. But, uh, man. One of the interesting things was Brooks went to a, 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 a Christian elementary school and his teachers would always comment when I would go pick him up back to school. They said, Brooks comes to here and we look at his lunch and he has shrimp cocktail and he has crab dip and they're like, can you send us some too? They <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the exclusive lunch. Yeah, wow. like, can you send a little extra? Yeah. Well, it was just because he wouldn't eat anything else, so. No? No, no, he, he wouldn't eat. He was bougie as a kid. Like, yeah, yeah. Like, that's was, that, was that like kind of breaking the bank that you had to buy seafood or what? Well, I mean, back, back then, thank, thank goodness, we didn't go through anything like like pandemics. And, and we were both doing reasonably well because okay. um, his his mother had just, um, she had just finished getting her license to teach. Mm -hmm. And she started teaching in Philadelphia at first. And then she started teaching in uh, Camden, mm -hmm. and eventually uh, she retired as a vice principal from the Trenton School school system. Yeah, so nice. So it was a, a nice uh, transition. transition. Yeah. yeah. No, definitely, definitely. Wow, wow. It was um, because um, again, for people that don't know, um, me and Brooks met in high school, and um, we clicked up and started a rap group together. It was. Uh, Brooks always into music growing up as a kid, or Brooks and I. There is a song that uh, El there's a there's an album called Duets. Duets that Elton John made. And okay. Of course, all of the cuts are duets. Okay. And Brooks and I used to practice one that we massage the lyrics to, and we used to drive his mother crazy. What was so we were, uh, I wish I could remember if the the artist he sang with his name is PM Dawn I PM believe Dawn. yeah and um, I don't really remember the the uh, name of the song mm -hmm. it's it's escaping me but but he always had like some type of musical music yes yeah yeah, yeah. We, we, we were always sing, sing. We, we 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 actually had the first generation bows uh -huh. that had the cassette player oh wow in it. and so wow. we would. We we would actually play the cassette because I had that uh, that CD uh -huh. rather and uh, yeah we would we we would sit sit there and we, we had a little tape tape recorder and we nice. we sing you know back and forth and he'd sing one part and I'd sing the other and we get the harmony just right so so we were doing that from probably I'd say he was maybe eleven wow so yeah yeah that definitely sounds like you know an introduction into the the music realm of you whatever you want to call it you know um just in the music itself i got a follow-up question to that one um when's the first time you know you ever got like anything that he wanted to make music or wanted to rap did he come to you and say hey check out my song like what was the first one he actually one? and i still have i'm so grateful I, I still have some of his original cuts uh on a thumb drive mm. and i don't know that he ever really told me but what I had let him know was that we come from a pretty musical family. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, know, I know me, I mean, pe people say that, that I can sing a little, little bit. And, but uh, I remember my grandparents, we lived in an apartment in the Bronx. And there was a little hallway that would transition into the rest of the house. So there was my grandparents' room. There was a bedroom next to it. There was a hallway that went into to the rest of the, the house. And I would sit in that hallway and I would play um, music. Mm -hmm. And of course, 
if you're a person that sang back, back then, you knew that the closer you got, got to the, the wall and you cupped your ear, you could hear yourself. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. So my grandparents would actually let me while, while they were tr trying to watch TV, the Ed Sullivan show something. I was right <laughs> on the other side of the door singing my Elton John stuff or my James oh, Taylor, Taylor mm -hmm. stuff. So, wow. And they never gave me a hard, hard time or told me to shut up or anything. <laughs> so so I, I, I guess... In a small way, you know, uh, that's how I kind of, I don't, I don't know that I passed it on to, to, to him. Right. I think it's just something that, that was, that was always yeah. in him. Right, you know, right, right. So I, I believe stuff like that gets yeah. passed down in the blood. Yeah. You know what I mean? Even, because even information gets yeah. passed down. Like, yeah. like I, I read this thing or I saw it somewhere. It said something about, like, our ancestors, a lot oh. of the stuff that they went through is coded in the DNA. You know, even down to us. So we might even have issues, maybe anxiety or some issues because our ancestors were right. probably at a time where they had to fight right. a lot and always be on the edge. So that could that could be written down in our DNA. So I, I truly believe that, yeah, like, you know, for the moments that you love music, that came from an ancestor, that came from another ancestor, and you passed it down to Brooks, man. Yeah. And he, he, had another, he had another way of expressing his music. You know, he was young. Hip hop is new, so, right. you know. He was born, is you know, he was born into the hip hop, and he he went forefront. And, and he was and he was he was great. Yeah, he dove yeah, yeah. straight in. I'm telling you, like, you, you, I remember at the moment, it was a crazy moment. Then you know, I got to meet him, I got to know him because the guys had just been working so hard on stuff, had been getting a little notoriety and everything like that, and they were ready for the next step. And I think you know when when when. You know, Brooks, God rest his soul, was taken away from us to put a put a halt on everybody. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because he definitely was probably one, if not the shining light of the group, who would have kind of took us there. You know what I'm saying? I feel yeah, like 100%. I feel like we. I talk about I talk about this all the time with Thrills. We talk about. He told me this the other day. He said if by now we would have been a real strong team, and I told him my problem is nobody played their role. Everybody wanted to be kind of what they wanted to be and didn't sit down and say, this is where you're strong at. This is what I'm strong at and this is where you're strong at. Well, see, and, and that's the thing. Me and Brooks were the only two on the same page. Right. Like, when it came to the music, like, if nobody else was going to do a show, me and Brooks was going to drive right. to do the show or right. we were going to go do right. the show. Right. Like, that's, like, like, that's the thing that me, me and Brooks was, when it came to the music, we was, right. we was there. We was there. And... Right. The way I look at it, the way I look at it, like, and we got that same kind of energy, too. It's like, you know, we're ready to work and everything. And the way I look at it now, it's like, um, I, I got a lot of ideas. I got a lot of vision. Right. But sometimes I don't know how to execute it or plan it or put it into place. This guy knows how to get stuff done. You can give him a mapped out thing of, like, all right, from beginning to end of how you want it to look. He'll probably give you something that and more and better right. because he already knows. He sees the structure. He knows how to. Physically get it done. How to get these hands shooking? How to how to get these calls made? And then you know, like Brooks, basically was the star. We could have like you know what I mean. He he had the energy. He had the lyricism. He had the, you know what I mean. And even even now, it's like some of us we still work together. And I feel like man, we're, we're old enough now. We we can we can look at ourselves and put ourselves in those roles. You know, we're working with uh, another artist that we're trying to do another uh, podcast with. Is a friend of ours. Jetty, you know what I mean, and 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 um, you know we obviously he does his music. I, I you know I'm there with them all the way, and you know we just gotta play our roles. Like I said, you know, yeah. and I feel like things will get done. You know, we'll all make it. You know? Yeah, and bring back to what you said earlier. I think like definitely Brooks's death brought up. Like I, no, I know it, it hit it me like did. I hit you guys like it crazy, hit me like I, I think after that like when we was doing music it was I was doing music but it was just like not the same it was like the group wasn't the same and like we slowly drifted apart after that but like when brooks was there we was like kind of like, was kind of like the glue he was right. like the glue got a song stuck to right. you just like glue mm -hmm. <laughs> he did the um remix of that right so that was that was that was dope that was dope um that song it was who was that was that in new york when he performed it when we went to perform? Well, I didn't go to that mm -hmm. one. Okay, so it was probably Miss, Miss Josephine that was Josephine there. went yeah, to yeah. that one because I think she also wanted to visit her sister because that was in Brooklyn. Yeah, Brooklyn, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah I remember. Yeah, I remember that show. It was no, I did the two. You you did two at the Red Room, right? Oh, we performed at the Red Room. Twice, That's when you right? took the pictures. Yeah, twice, right? 
We we actually performed a few times. The, the Red Room was like our go-to spot. Um, shout out the host IMD. He will always hit us up for the shows out there at the Red Room, um, in Camden. Um, but yeah, yeah. Um, the two you want, yeah, the two you want to wear the Red Room, but that's where we go for the shows. We did a couple shows there actually, because IMD we were cool. IMD. Um, we do shows in Philly. Like even like to recent years. I mean, still hits me up for sure. That photo of Brooks Bubble behind you was oh. was actually taken. Oh, yeah, this one right here. Yeah, this one right here. Yep. That's that, that, no, I'm telling you, that, that was, it was crazy because that was probably the or one of the nights that I actually linked up with because I met Thrills and I met E at some time before that, you know, because it was it was Mike, Mike Millar. Right. Who I met first out of everybody, okay. you know. He, um, I met him in a history class in high school. And you know, I don't remember how, but I remember it was instant bomb, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like, you know, talk, click, the rap and stuff, hit beats and rap, so that kind of instantly made us like cool. So he like, you know, he liked how I made beats and how I rap, so he wanted to introduce me to, you know, a rap group that he, that he was with, and he introduced me to the guys. I think it was Thrills first and E. Yeah, me actually. They were, um, so I remember that day, we yeah. was in my basement. <laughs> right. um, uh, my aunt's basement. Mm -hmm. Um, shout out. They had like a whole Some mattress. Evening. Yeah, they had like a whole mattress up, trying to make a little studio thing to the sound. Yeah, it was, oh, man. It was raw, man. Yeah, Thinking of like how it came a long way, man. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's crazy. But yeah, yeah, we we was in the basement. It was me yeah. he working on music. Uh, yeah. uh, Spades brought you with um Frankie. Everybody, it's your boy A One from For the Thrill Podcast. We got Mr. Cadero with us. We here in Jersey. We got thrills. He came from Texas. We got another episode for y'all, man. Episode 36. Let's get it. Uh, what's good in the hood? Again, this is For The Throw Podcast. Special guest, Mr. Cordero. Co-hosting A1. And now we got E in the building. You already know he went by Raw E, Sony Dash. It's a CG reunion, baby. <laughs> <laughs> What's good? What's good? What's good, E? What's going on? What's, what's going new on? with you? Tell people about you. What you got going on right now? Still with the music? What's going on? Yeah, doing music, music, a little bit, something. I know you used to do, uh, you was into the Bitcoin and yeah, stuff yeah, like that. NFTs, <laughs> NFTs. Yeah, man. Yeah, NFTs out. We got the Soul Zebra, NFT. That one's doing pretty good. Um, crypto, you know, it's up and down. Yeah, it's oh, crazy now, right now. Well, now the market, market is, is like, yeah, yeah, the market is right, right now. But right now. this is the best time to buy, right? <laughs> right, right, right. Yeah, I guess. right. Can't let that scare you off. So yeah. you know what I'm saying. Well, this is not financial advice, but right, yeah. Yeah. we're not, we're not doing that. Today we're not is, financial advisors. <laughs> today is about pot. Is about uh, photography and you know a little bit of reminiscing. You know what I'm saying, going into the past. And again, uh, bringing back to earlier. Again, we um we talk about Brooks a lot on the podcast. E was another good uh, yeah, friend. Man. Of Brooks he was part growing of the, up, part of the, of the CG group. team, and yep. just just a good friend in general. Well, you guys were the originators, you know. It was you, him, Brooks, and and, and Spades. Right, yeah, right, right. You know. yeah. Also, he is the person who is in one of the best photographs I've ever yeah, taken. Right, right. <laughs> I love that, that photograph. Tell everybody about that. Boy. Yeah, <laughs> not, that he, photo is he killer. needs another shoot because he got to show off those those yeah, locks. Yeah, yeah, I was gonna, gonna just say, shoot. yeah. Have him flip the locks like, look real, real good. Uh, I'm flipping shoot, the shit. Yeah. Like. <laughs> That's crazy. Now, now, you know what I'm saying? Start styling it. Start styling it up. Get those roster hats, those Jones that be, the 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 bandanas, you know what I'm saying? You should be hanging. Yeah, man. Yeah, it'll, it'll match your stuff up like more. It. It'll pack it right, down right, more. Right. It won't be as fuzzy and stuff. I used to have locks too, you know that? No. Yeah, I had the locks too, man. They ain't copy me. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, nah. We actually started yeah, like together so and then I, I copped out. Yeah, 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 he yeah, kept yeah. going. Right. No, I copped out too, remember? I, I no, cut no, no well, yeah, the first that. time, but that's why I was still yeah, growing yeah, right, mine. Right, 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 right. And then I cut mine. He kept going. I thought he was going to cut him off for sure. Yeah. He got him still. So, good for you, bro. Bringing it back to earlier with um, Ainge um, was talking about the genes and the genetics. Don't yeah. you got a uh, family or a brother in yes. uh, the music industry? Yes, my uh, stepbrother Lenny Castro is one of the top percussionists in the industry. He actually got his first gig with um, an interesting thing about being prepared because his story, he was um, 18, he had just graduated from the 
everybody knows from the the Mo movie fame that that school oh yeah performing mm -hmm. arts well the other school was called art uh, was called music and art mm -hmm. and music and, and art work was for people that could draw and for musicians mm -hmm. and so he auditioned and he got in there mm -hmm. and uh, after he graduated he was selling drums at a place called the percussion store mm -hmm. in uh, New York City and what what had happened was M Melissa Manchester had just landed the Midnight Blue album mm -hmm. and the single was was going big and she was going to go out on the road and she had auditioned one of Lenny's high school friends and his high school friend got to the gig but also auditioned for a group back in the day called Orleans and the Orleans gig was a much cooler gig mm -hmm. so he took the Orleans gig and told Melissa Manchester hey you, you may want to check out my my, my, my boy mm -hmm. Lenny and uh, ever since then he got hired to, to do that that tour he moved out to LA and the rest is history so you know always prepare yourself and uh, you know stick stick around with your, your buddies and create a community of uh, artists because if one guy hits, you know, it should help to buy a ticket yeah, yeah. for uh, everybody, yeah. Wow. Absolutely. Where uh, where did they get, like if they wanted to check out um, Lenny's, uh, maybe uh, All you website gotta do, or uh, if YouTube. You, or... you, you can look, look him up on Facebook, Lenny uh, Castro. Uh, I don't know if he has a YouTube channel or not, but, but, but you can look up Ed Cord, E-D space C-O-R-D on uh, YouTube, and he's featured in a lot of the... Uh, videos that, that, that I have po posted. So uh, you should be able to find them there. I'm not sure if he has a page or not, but uh, certainly uh, you can you can look look him up on Facebook. The last tour that he did was, uh, he did the Toto tour a couple, couple of years ago, and he, he did, uh, I think his last tour was with, is the crooner's name, is it Jeffrey Mayer? Is that a guy's name, right? I think a guy who sings uh I'm not sure ballads <laughs> and stuff, so anyway anyway. Well, um I got a question. So you you were in the military, you served. Right? Yes, sir. And you said you've been all over the world. Well, you know, yeah. you've been a lot of places. Yeah. Um a lot of the places you've done photography in or were no, or was that afterwards? No, that I when I was in the army, uh I didn't I didn't mm -hmm. know about this okay. for photography thing, but it was a an incredible experience. I got to serve in uh, Germany for almost four years, uh, and uh, it, it was it was really 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 great. Um, the one thing that struck me was that as I got older, I started to realize the uh, the uh, the amount of racism that we live within, which I was not aware of because in my own house. My, my grandfather that raised me would have been considered a white person. My, my uncle that was, would have been considered African American. So the family dynamic that, that I had actually didn't lead me to believe that there was anything like that. And so as I got older and I started facing that, what I realized about Germany that I loved was that if the Germans didn't like me, it didn't have anything to do with color. Right. It was because they, in general, didn't like Americans. Right. And I respected them more. Right, right, right. No, because, that makes sense. Right. because they didn't judge me, you know, based on how yeah. I, I looked. Yeah, so, yes, yeah. yeah. but uh, the uh, German experience well, was really good. Definitely one of the most beautiful places I've ever, ever, ever seen. And I was, I was fortunate when I got back home and I was out of the service. I actually went back for a uh, a 30-day uh, trip back through Germany and through the different places that that I enjoyed in, in Europe because I just wanted to experience it as a civilian. So so that that was a a, a wonderful thing. Right. Well, first and foremost, thank you for your service in the military. Yeah, thank you. I got another question. When you were, you I, I wanted to know how long were you in the, the military for? How long well, you served for? I served for, um, I, I joined for four years. Everybody, I, I don't know if it's like this now, but, but when I was in, you were able to join for either three or four, mm -hmm. but your obligation is for six. Mm -hmm. So basically what that meant was I joined for four, so I did four years active duty. Okay. But for the next two years, 
they they could have rang me up and said, we need you, and I would have had to go. Oh, okay. you were fortunate enough, they didn't. Yeah, you know, yeah, there, yeah, there wasn't anything going going on. So right, yeah, but, right. But, yeah, but so I'm not sure if it's like that now. But but well, when I joined, you know, like I said, your commitment was six. Even if you did three active, then they still have your number four. The next three, I did four active, mm. so they still have my, my number four for the, the next two years. Right, right, yeah, right. Right. yeah, I just I just wanted to add to that other question I had, and this is just kind of like uh, uh, just your own opinion. If if you can go anywhere and take pictures, where would you want to go? It could be where you've been or you haven't been there before. I anywhere. would want to go back to, um, I've been wanting to. I don't know if I'm going to be able to, to, to do it at, at the stage or because of my my, my uh, <laughs> health issues. But I would definitely go back to uh, Europe. Uh, Europe. I think that the fact if when, when you get off of the train and you walk down the streets mm -hmm. in uh, Italy... And you see the Colosseum, and you see the Trevi Fountain, and you see the Hanging Gardens, and you see all of these things. Mm -hmm. And 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 when you go to Florence, which is my one of my favorite places in the entire world, mm -hmm. and you see the Statue of David, mm -hmm. and you walk in the piazzas, it it it, it just takes you back that there's something from so long ago right. that's still that's standing. Still there, right. And while I'm proud to be an American. What stuff, I think about right. in the back of my mind is that if the Coliseum had been in Manhattan, we would have knocked that shit down about a hundred years ago. Right, right. It's like <laughs> stuff is not going to be here a hundred well, years like, like it was before. Look at how we do with stadiums, right? Okay. I mean, right. Base, a right. baseball right. stadium, the, the vet lasted for 30 years. Yeah, revamp it. Yeah, <laughs> knock it down and build, right, so yeah. build something, something top, new. Top three things that you want to get a picture of. Just top three things. Top yeah. three things yeah, you, you that want, I you want to photograph. Want. Yeah. Um, I want to go back and I want to take, I want to do street photography. So it's not one thing, street, street photography, street in, photography. In, Rome. in Rome. Rome, street photography in Rome. I want to, um, I want to do I want to take for photography walking up and down the Champs Elysees, which is um, you walk from that very famous traffic circle in uh, in uh, in uh, Paris, mm. and at yeah, the other right. end of it is the Eiffel Tower. Mm. So so you walk from the that famous tra traffic circle, and then you look down, and the Eiffel Tower is at mm. the other end. So take photographs all along there, nice. and um, probably. Um, some place that I've not been to that I, that I would like to photograph, which I can probably do, is somewhere in the northwestern United States, mm -hmm. like Montana yeah, or the Dakotas. Land. Yeah, exactly. And the sun makes everything yeah. like yellow and brown. Yeah. 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 So, <laughs> Grand so Canyon style. <laughs> that I would like to do. Yeah. Right. Those no, are that's the cool, things, man. Right? Yeah. Mountains and stuff. Yeah, definitely. What's your favorite type of photography? You know what, I, I think that um, more than anything else, I really enjoy having a person in the studio. I like, I like managing and shaping light. Yeah, you can manipulate more. And yeah, right, so you're, you're, you're much more in control. Right. Um, and, it's, and, it, and it's interesting, I had a, a young, young man tell me in, in a class I, I was teaching, he went through about 16 adjectives, and I'm exaggerating, about <laughs> why he didn't want to use flash. And so I'm listening to, to him and I said, if the basis of the medium of photography is light, why would you be against introducing light no, no matter the, the source? Mm -hmm. And so I at least got him to think differently. Mm -hmm. I don't know if he reshaped how he did his actual shooting. Right. But if if as a photographer you're adverse to using any kind of light, you should probably think of something else to do because it would kind of be like being wanting to be an indie car me mechanic and not wanting to be around oil. <laughs> <laughs> nice comparison. Right, right, right. That's cool right there. <laughs> and same thing with video, you need light for video. Like I was yeah. uh, testing out earlier without uh, yeah, brains. sometimes it'll look good on the screen, especially yeah. if you do it digital, you got the screen to see it, it may look good, but then when you when you see it 
on the other side and <laughs> sorry guys we're being haunted <laughs> how many times that's uh, yeah, folks is that that's actually, the, was that one of the races yeah, yeah. No, oh you know who it is <laughs> that's the one wait the one you don't want to talk to yeah no, no, <laughs> it's like oh it's scary <laughs> stay away that wasn't scary stay away that's the dogs re reminding me it's time to put out the trash oh, okay, okay okay well let's take a quick break real quick All right, man. <laughs> That was funny. <laughs> right on time. What's going on? It's your boy Audacity, A W D A S S I T Y, C G family. Since the beginning, uh -huh. just wanted to let you guys know, Ed has always been my inspiration since I came in contact with everyone. You know, with the photography, I've always been into photography since I was uh, young, like five, six years old. I took lessons. Um, but I didn't actually get back into it until after uh, the music with the group and meeting Ed. I actually decided in 2014 to go to the next level and, and take it to, you know, get my degree in cinematography from Full Sail University. So that's photography, video, music, entertainment, it's always been like a passion of mine um, and since I, I probably wouldn't even have gotten into music like I really did if it wasn't for thrills because well we met at Target yeah yeah we, we, met, uh, we met at Target working yeah. overnight and ever since then it was like we, we just we clicked it was like yo we're gonna do we're gonna it was actually me and him first everybody else was away Brooks was what basic training. They were in the military at that time. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. And Mike too, Spades too. He was in basic yeah. training. And uh, when they all came back, it was just like we were like a family. So it was like we all, you know. Yeah. The funny thing about uh, when I met this guy at uh, Target, like we do, we did the music, and then I just came to him, man. When we down with my group, CG. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, would, I, would, I would be. Uh, There's no introduction, man. Right. You start picking up niggas. Like, yeah, hey, you want to be down? Yeah, yeah. Show them down. Have, All right. Was, I had. Um, <laughs> I was. I would be listening to music in my headphones, rapping, and I was being the back. I ain't really know him like that yet. And then he just came up to me. Yo, you rap? Yeah. Yeah, I rap. What's up? You want to spit something? Spit something for me. That's what we want to talk. So I, I had a whole thing on it. Boom. Just speak. He was like, yo, that's fire. Yo, be in my group. <laughs> All right. All right. Okay. Yo, that's Then he met Brooks and said, yo, help me beat up these dudes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> that's all the intro. That's how they work. Yeah, that's funny, man. Yeah. That's funny, man. Like, yeah, man. I mean, that'd be a good, alright, we could do, that's like a good mid-cut scene, right? Yeah, that was good. I mean, I think that, that was good to add into the podcast. He kind of started potting there. I know we did start potting, but I wanted to no, flip this cool, around. Cool. You know what I'm saying? We're turning this. That basically, <clears throat> a two-hour movie. It's really like 20, 20 hours? <laughs> no, no, it's made up. It's made up of a whole bunch of about three to five minute vignettes. So small peak pieces. Mm. So when you watch something like the, the Godfather, right? Mm -hmm. The longest scene in it might might be only five or six min minutes long, right? Mm -hmm. And they take all these five or six minute things and they put them to together and you make make a movie. Cause I remember people when video cameras first got affordable, mm -hmm. you guys were probably too young, but what everybody would do mm -hmm. was they would get the longest tape they could buy and they would just hit play. Or excuse me, they would just hit record right. and just leave it on a tri tripod, so you had the little kid picking his nose mm -hmm. and somebody else scratching in their ass, and you had all this <laughs> content you didn't want. Right, right, right. You know, so so yeah, so so it took me a while to figure out. That's why this stuff stuff works, right? Because they take one scene, they start it, they end it, and they connect it to another mm -hmm. scene and another scene, yeah. and they just tell the story in chapters. So, yeah, yeah. No, definitely, definitely. I'm very into like movie making. Like I love, you know, I like photography. I like take pictures, but I feel like film is, you know, somewhere, you know, I want to try to tackle. I want to direct a film. I want to put pieces of scenes together to create one coherent story. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And I wanted to really pop. So I'm studying a lot of different films and and like what goes into making them and stuff like that right now. And, and and screenwriting, that's something I'm looking into too. Learn okay. How, learn how to write screenwriting. I actually talked to this, I just talked to this guy at my job. He's a new hire. And, you know, at my job, 
you know, people are more or less, you know, they, they cool there. You know, say hi to you. You know what I'm saying? It's small, it's less than 100 people on, on staff in the building. So it's really an environment where most of us know our names, but first first name basis. Mm-hmm. So, you know, you know, like we embrace that also with our new hires. So new people come, we say hi, good morning. You know, people look at you like, you know what I mean? But I'm like, hi, how you doing? You know, but this one guy, anyways, uh, long story short, I started, you know, chatting him up at lunch. And he, he was way more chatty than me. He started talking about his life and he was a writer and all this other stuff. But, you know, he was just telling me, I told him, yeah, I want to get into that. He's like, you know, a good good thing to do is get some of your favorite movies, some of your favorite directors, yeah. look their movies online because um, usually they'll have the manuscript of the script right. of what they, what you know, and you just, you know, more or less copy what they did. Not word for word, but the format, you know, right. as, as who's talking, the, what the scene is, because, you know, in scripts and screenplays, they're written yeah, as, structure. yeah, and in, in a way, when you read them, it's, it's a picture in your brain. Right. I see, you know what I'm saying? Well, Ice like, Cube oh, was talking about that. that. You know? When he first got into uh, making music, like mm-hmm. the Fridays and stuff, he, yeah. he went based off of, like, certain Move. increments or right. a certain amount of time, like right. what you were saying. Uh, and it was a certain, a certain way he right. does all his movies goes back to that same process. My suggestion is read a good novel. Right. Because most movies, right. it's based off... It, they they didn't start as a screenplay. Right, right. They started out as a as a well, as well, a Well, the thing is, the thing is, I heard about screenplays is is that when you give a screenplay, everything from when you give them that screenplay, the director or the person yeah, is already it. gonna know if they want to read it or not. From mm-hmm. how many pages you put to the introduction, so when they open that first page, the you know, it, and they only read the first page or two, and then that's it. They'll either say yes or no. Like you, they won't even get through half the script. So you really gotta know what you're doing when you're doing a screenplay. I think a good guy gotta study. While while I'm not a filmmaker, but I, I will just tell you about my experience reading reading a particular book. I, I'm very very in, into to reading, and um, and act actually I have to throw this in. I like the feel of a real book. This of course, Kindle yeah. shit. <laughs> oh yeah. I don't oh, want right. to read it on my phone. I like having a good hardcover book. But anyway. Yeah. Yeah. What what I was going to mention to you guys that want to be filmmakers is I would strongly suggest reading something by an author named Robert Ludlum. Mm-hmm. I remember reading one of his spy novels. He literally Robert took, Ludlum. Ludlum, yeah. He literally took almost two and a half pages to describe what in a film would have would have probably been less than thirty seconds long, because he goes through. How the guy was sweating, mm-hmm. how he mm-hmm. how he twisted in his writing. chair, yeah. yeah. Uh, how he twisted in his chair, how he, how he put his arm on the armrest, right. you know, how he leaned forward and because so they want that, you to see it as you read it, it. correct, yeah. yeah. Right. And he he was I have never read anybody that does it as well as him. The other thing is a real good movie to to to, to watch, and this is good for. Photography also, because film is just another form of photography. Right, 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 right. Is watch the final scene in A Few Good Men. Okay. Because I remember when I was first doing photographs that I, I was making them too big. Mm-hmm. And by that, what I mean is that my people couldn't tell unless there was a person in it. Okay. Couldn't tell what the object was that I was trying Focus to bring on. forth. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So when you watch A Few Good Men, and a lot of people don't realize this, that ripping scene right at the end where uh, um, where he goes into, um, I guess it's around a, a three or four minute kind of a dialogue. Um, he's actually cropped like this. Mm. You don't see the top of his head. You don't see his neck. But there's a sharp focus on the eyes, and I always tell people you want to do the same thing with photography. Mm-hmm. Most of the people don't don't even realize in a lot of the portraits I take, I actually crop half of pe- people's head off. Because unless you have interesting hair, it it doesn't matter. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? But but if the eyes are not in 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 fo- focus, everything else is lost. And I I think it's the same way. Yeah. yeah, especially it's, it's, in a in a part that has a lot of dialogue. Right, right. right. Uh, you got so many different shot types in films. Right. Yeah. 
you got your long shot, you got your medium shot, medium close yeah. up, all right. different types of shots. Mm-hmm. And it depends on the scene. Right. So one of the rules though, when you got, you know, a group of people in a shot, you wanna keep that space between the the, the right, head right. and the head, right. a little bit above them yeah. because they wanna be in the third uh, right in the th- it's it's three spaces. One in the middle and then it's the third at the top. Right. So they want to be right above where that line is breaking them in third. That's the same yeah. thing in photography. Right. Well, you when know, you pose people, even if you have a little infant child and you have somebody who's six foot tall, you take the tallest person and and you sit them down. What you want, the symmetry you, you want is a half head height right, right. between the people. So like right now, this is not perfect for, for a photo because he would be elevated to, to about here. Mm-hmm. And then anyway. Ethan would, would, we would only have Ethan up so that he's a half head over you. Mm-hmm. So you're a half head below him. Mm-hmm. He's a half head above you. He's a half head above me. Mm-hmm. And then he's a half head above me. And then that gives symmetry. You mm-hmm. actually wind up, when you do that, you wind up seeing the same amount of each person right. in the shot. Right, right. Mm. So that somebody doesn't look like they're really super vague right, right. Mm. or somebody does doesn't look really, yeah. really good. I come with photographers same thing. notes. Yeah. You know, same funny, thing. Yeah. Very, very you know, good. You say that, you know, film um, film is just another form of photography. You know, like in movies, you know, you ever seen the credits in the end? Yes. Yeah. They show you, they have a director of film, the t- the, the, the director of photography. They have to get those shots before the shots are taken right. on the camera. You know what yeah. I mean? They gotta, they gotta, you know, you know, photography. You know, it's like <laughs> when you said watch the end scene of yeah. A Few Good Men. So I, right now, like when I, anything I watch, whether it be a movie yeah. or a music video, I'm learning because I'm trying to, I'm, like now my head is in the camera's, cameraman's perspective when I watch a movie. It's not just me watching a movie. Whatever I watch, I'm oh, trying yeah. to see the scene I'm section. definitely like now I'm learning I watch all, a movie. All that. I don't um, know if it's because I stepped right. into the film world right. or, or what, but yeah, now, like now I no, focus on that. Do you, because you do a lot movie. of video, do you, yeah, do you um, see, do the same I, thing when watching stuff? After I went to, I still do it. Right, that's what I'm saying. So after I went to film school, I've been doing it ever since. Right, right, right. I can look at a, a movie and I can tell what shot type it is. Right. Or I can tell the focus, the distance between the person and the camera where it was. Right, now it's like a part of your consciousness. Like, like, I think, I think <laughs> subconscious, the, uh, second nature type of I thing. I think sometimes the, the what makes a good movie, it kind of gets blurred between, you know, what's going on in the movie and then how the shots look. Hmm. Because like you'll see a movie and you'll, you'll be like, oh, this movie was great. Because of the shots, you knew right, what they right. did to take the mm-hmm. shots. You knew what they were doing, what they were trying to get. And another person watched the movie, and was like that movie was boring. Like right, they right, just right, right. they just talked all the time. They just they never really happened. But it's like you don't know how much of a cinematography, cinematography, uh, you know, like a cinematography, like a cinematography, like a milestone that it achieved. You know what I'm saying? Right, right. As far as taking shots and what it takes to get a certain shot, and how it looks like like the Batman, the last Batman that came out. Like it's half half. Like people are like, you know, this is the greatest one, or oh, I like Michael Keaton's better. Da 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 da. Where it's like, yo, the cinematography. Right, the cinematography is crazy. Yeah, right, crazy. They did. There was one scene where Batman was fighting people in the dark, and you only seen them when the gun, the gun flashes. Right, 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 right. That was all you practical. Shadow, right? That was there was no other light but those muzzle flashes. That was all practical, and they did it. You know, you watch a movie, like, why is it so dark? Like, it's supposed to be a like this. A lot of times, though, it's you like, would think it's like that. Right. But right. it's actually not. Right. right. Well, I mean, that's what the director said. Right. The director was trying it to might steal. Be, it might be, the but it director, might not be. Uh, what's his name? Uh, my, um, my, Michael Reeves, I think his name is Mike Reeves or whatever. Uh, I probably messed up the director. The way name. people, the way but, um, the director. Matthew, like, his name is Matthew Reeves. Mm-hmm. Matthew Reeves. He, he said himself, he was like taking. You ever seen Seven? The movie Seven? Yeah, yeah. Kind of took the style. Cinematography style of, of seven. Seven, that's what uh Brad Pitt. Brad Pitt, yeah. And, oh yeah, yeah, I like that. that was like that's gritty, one of my like gritty and stuff like that. It was great. Fair I love the Batman. The Batman was great. You know what's a good one for for you to watch since since you're into film? There's a movie. I don't remember the the, the name, but I'm sure if you 
you get into the Google machine and you put in an upper put the script in the Google machine. <laughs> the Google machine. It's like a big box that says Google on it. It's Google got a whole bunch of buttons. Yeah, yeah. Right. yeah. Look up. Look no, up this. Going. You put the actual <laughs> item in there. Look this up. I think that the actor in it is Ray Milan, and I remember watching it as I was in high school, and I'm watching this movie. It's in black and white. I think it was from the '50s. And like I said, I think it's Ray Milan. And, and the movie is not River really, really Long. It's maybe a little over an hour. And I'm watching it, man, and it's got me spellbound. I'm sitting there and I'm, you know, a little <laughs> kid. And I'm like, mm. the movie ends, and I realized there was not one word of dialogue. And, and yeah, it had, the, the movie. It had me movies. pinned. No, it wasn't a silent, well, it, no, it wasn't a silent movie like like a Char Charlie Chap Chaplin type. Right, right, right. Yeah, <laughs> like you didn't know. When you watched it, that it was gonna be that there was gonna be no script, right? Mm -hmm. And it and it, I was like, wow, that's amazing. Mm -hmm. You would appreciate that. You know, mm -hmm. Back in the day, like that, a lot of a lot of like that. I watched a lot of uh, when I was in school. I studied uh, Alfred Hitchcock. Yes, a lot of his movies. You know, Golden Age. They did a lot of that. I'm, like yeah. suspense. That's why I'm into suspense so much. Yeah. Because I like that type of style. Well, people like Alfred Hitchcock has created the standard. If there's a basic standard to make a movie, he's like half of it. You know what I'm saying? It's like originator. I used to like though. Um, did you watch any of Rod Sterling stuff? Who was kind of the same way. Rod Sterling was a little bit darker, if it's possible, right, right, than, than Alfred Hitchcock. Did, did you watch? I, watch any I, of his? I, I read about it, but I didn't watch any of his. He was. I will never forget, there was this one, because he used to do like Alfred Hitchcock, mm. he used to do a bunch of little vignettes, you know, these yeah. like kind of short, sure. like, you know, 12, 12 minute things, and and the, the one that struck me the most was the one that he did of this man who had been a real oppressor and a horrible guy during the Second World War, killed Jews and mm. all kinds of horrible stuff, so he's back in the United States now, and I think he was like a janitor or something, you mm -hmm. know, and nobody knew who he, he was. And, and he would have these nightmares and he would be really this stuff. Because what I think happens in the uh, little little script is that he winds up either living in the, the same building or running into a guy that he had done all these horrible things to. Mm -hmm. Or like kill, kill the guy's family. family so like after he got off work, he would go running to, to this museum mm -hmm. and he would immerse himself in the art. And the one picture he really liked, there was a peaceful scene of a man in a boat fishing this beautiful landscape. And so he would sit there and he would subliminally, he would put himself into that scene where he's sitting in the boat and he would read this relaxation would come over him and he'd feel really, really good. And so one day he had a really uncomfortable interaction with this man that reminded him of all these horrible things of his past. So he goes running to the museum to immerse himself in that photograph or in that painting. Mm -hmm. And dude, they have moved the paintings all, all around and he puts himself in to Christ being crucified. Uh. <laughs> yeah, wow. hey, well, he ended up being, being <laughs> crucified. Yeah, yeah. Cause it was uh, in the spot, dude. That's just funny story to tell. That that was yeah. like dark. I was like, what kind uh, of mind? That was the end. Of, and that was the yeah. end. <laughs> you didn't need like anything that. else right. after that. Yeah, right. That's right. crazy. Mm -hmm. Bro, I want to um. So since I say you were one of my mentors, even says one mm -hmm. of your mentors that when it comes to this film and oh, well, photography or whatnot. Who, who was one of your mentors growing up or just getting into the photography? Field? You know what? I I would have to say that the one, it, it would have to be Ansel Adams and then um, Annie Leibovitz because she does portraits. And who, who, who are they? Ansel Adams is known as like, I, I mean, basically when you go into a store, and they have giant posters of like the the Grand Canyon and all of that. Old school and, photographers don't get me mad at me for asking that question. And it's, <laughs> and, it's, and it's a black and white picture. It was it was probably done by Ansel Adams. And the cool thing about him was he actually made a living and he shot something called large format cameras. So when he would hike up, cause cause he had to take this camera with him and he'd have to hike up, you know, in, into these mountains mm -hmm. and stuff. And with a large format camera, 
you take one shot at a time. So you're act actually the negative is eight by ten. So you, you actually have them all kind of closed in a box and you put one in and you shoot, then you gotta take it out, put it away and reload and, and another one. And look at me, I get mad when I can't keep clicking my, <laughs> <laughs> the little five seconds, I'm like, hurry up. And back then they had to go through, that's crazy. And then, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Annie Leibovitz is, uh, I mean, she's just famous for it. She's, most of the portraits of, most of the good portraits of any, famous actor, artist, musician or anybody right. is probably take taken by, by her. And one of the things that I will that that bothered me that I will never forget, I was in a group that somebody asked me to join mm -hmm. on Facebook and it was it was ethnic for photographers. Most of them were African American but 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 some like me were Hispanic. But it was like a a minority thing. Mm -hmm. And so they were talking about something, and I saw somebody putting Annie Leibovitz down. And I'm thinking, you know, they said, anyway, they, they just went kind of on and on and on. And so my question to that guy after I decided to, to leave the, the group was, well, why do you think she's where she, she is? It, it isn't because she's white. It isn't because she's Jewish. It isn't because she's gay. It's because she knows what she, she's doing and she can pro produce. And if you feel that just because of her ethnicity, you don't have anything to learn from, from, from her, I'm, I'm certainly going to never hire, hire you. Mm -hmm. You know, I just don't, don't get it, you know, so. What's his response? I don't know, cause, oh, cause I just left the group. Hey, yeah. I just, it was I just dropped my bomb and left. <laughs> you dropped the mic. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me, let me get out of here. Yeah. With that one. So any, anyway, it's you know, if you reach a point in your life where you think there's nothing left to learn, I don't know why you want to be right. be here anymore. Right, right. right. Always, always learning. learning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, no, definitely, definitely, definitely. So. I know you said you retired. So do you? So are you like you stopping uh, with gigs? You don't take no more gigs, or I um well I just did one. Um, I guess the last one I did was the beer and wine festival at um, mm -hmm. where is it that the Phillies play? What is the name of, of that field? Is it is it Chorus Field or some something? You know, both live in Philly now. Y'all should know this. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> Philly for like what? Yeah, one for two? Yeah. I'm in Philly for two months. I still don't fuck with it out there. I don't know nobody out there. It was the uh, the house. The uh, beer and wine festival. I I, okay. I photographed and uh, nice. so so that was the uh, last one. And, and actually, I actually did the the gig for free just so I could get into the event free. <laughs> so yeah. so the cool part is yeah exactly yeah, that, that a little bit of wine you know hanging out <laughs> and, you know free parking you know so yeah, yeah so all you gotta do is take some pictures exactly no yeah. uh, that's that's one thing I do to get in like all types of events every time I take my camera and I feel like if I want to get in for free. I just pull out the camera, boom, and I go walk right in. I remember I was like, everybody hold equipment, we get yeah. inside. No, 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 in Texas, Wale concert, yeah, I was literally yeah, like, definitely. not just the front row, but in front of the cage. Right. I was there for at least, <laughs> no, I, I walked all the way in, like like where the like publicist, everyone's there. I'm just there maybe two going towards the end of the show where someone came up to me, hey, do you got like a pass to me in? And I'm like, oh no, I can leave, it's okay. And I just walked off, but it was like, I don't know if she was their manager, but she's the one that came up to me. But I was there for like almost two and a half, three hours before someone came up to me just because I walked in with the camera. Well, I'll tell you a funny story, how I wound up meeting, I, I think most of the people in this area know Angelo Cataldi from the radio show. He does the sports talk whip. And um, back when they used to have Wing Bowl, he, he started Wing Bowl and he, he had Wing Bowl. He said he was going to do Wing Bowl every year. It was a wing, wing eating contest mm -hmm. until the Eagles won a Super Bowl. Mm -hmm. And then that, that was going to be the, the, the last one. So, so I used to go every year. <clears throat> and um, back then, they didn't charge you to get in. As the event got larger, you had to buy tickets and all kinds of stuff. But anyway, I actually went there and I've always had... A professional rig because I was shooting at it at that point so I just went went in and I don't I am not in endorsing this but this is something that can help you access gigs it's just get 
a really good <laughs> Pete, looking, say no. a really good looking, professional looking card holder, and then get. I had put on their official event mm. foot photographer. I remember you right. told me this before. And <laughs> on the other end, I have my business card, and I just hung that lanyard on, and I have all of the equipment. So, so I walk in, and now all of a sudden, I'm in pit row with the U UPI Reuters for photographers, everybody. So I call up the show the week after, and I wind up getting on the air. And I tell Angela, I said, yo, I snuck into your, your gig. And I, uh, he said, what? And I said, yeah. And I took, took all of these, these, these pictures. And that was during the days of film. Mm -hmm. So I got a lot of the stuff printed. I put them in a collage frame. He invited me down and I pr presented it to him. And then every year after that, he said, you, you don't have to sneak in any anymore. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Wow, that's a cool story. So I got an invite every year. Yeah, that's yeah. So, so just be prepared and and just know how to act right and you could you can usually gain gain access yeah so. no definitely that's what's up that's what's up but don't be felonious mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah 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 no yeah I, yeah I went, I, matter of fact recently recently like maybe two months ago um me and my um a friend of mine from texas he lives in houston he came down and um there, there was this like after party spot that right. I was trying to get into, but like it was a, it was a certain limit of people they could enter, and and the line was super long. So I didn't have my camera on me on time. So I'm like, man, but he does photography too. I said, you got your photography, you got your camera. He said, yeah. Why? What's up? I said, go get it. He went to the car. He grabbed his camera. I said, let me hold it. Let me show you what to do. I went straight to the front. I said, hey, um, we're here um to take pictures based off of, um. Uh, one of the uh, the cooks recommended us to come in to take the pictures and talk to the owner. And then she looked, she went, she turned around, she's like, "Oh, the cook is not here." Um, they said, they said, I said, "Sorry, I can, st I'll, I'll still do it. No, I don't, I don't mind doing it for free. It yeah. don't matter." So <laughs> I went right in, boom, started taking pictures. I went, I went to where the owner was at and just started taking pictures of the owner, and he started posing and everything. <laughs> so once the person that let me in saw that, it was free game. Right. It was right. just. We was just in there having it. <laughs> yeah. yeah, man. So it goes to show you, man. You got a skill. You got and, and you persistent with it. You know what I mean? You, it'll open doors for you. Yeah, right? Absolutely, yeah, it'll open absolutely. doors for you. So yeah. Um, any advice for upcoming people who want to get into film or no photography? I'm sorry, want to get into photography or I'm not sure if they should. What would you tell them? It has to be what. Just speaking for my myself, mm. when I came to the realization, and there is a difference that photography was not what I do, it's what I am. Mm. And, mm. and when you can make that distinction and really, really mean it, so you know, it's like, no, I'm a writer. Mm -hmm. And what I may not be able to pay my rent writing, that's who I am. Mm -hmm. um, when you have that kind of conviction, mm then then that's that's what you should follow and un, unfortunately especially how the economy is now and come coming out of covid it's it's hard and we do have to do other things but kind of like i was telling, telling you the story earlier about my uh, brother he was he was sell, selling drums mm -hmm. you know and then you know his friend new a friend you audition so just make sure that you're prepared Mm -hmm. be in the right kind of a uh, network mm -hmm. and and be good at your, your 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 craft and never stop learning and I think as as especially now because when I was coming up there were not as many avenues where you could show your your your, your work I mean you guys have you know, so we were talking about Instagram, and mm -hmm. you know, Thank you you, so you could have a podcast. I mean, people, if you would have said podcast when when I was in high school, somebody would have thought you had something like measles. They said, "Wow, wow, is that a growth?" <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> but a podcast, what's a podcast? What's a podcast? Yeah. Pop that you podcast. Know what I mean? Exactly. Oh yeah, the world is like so different now. It's like, yeah. So so you guys are no really now, revolutionaries. Yeah. I, I mean, you you can just. Some some of the stuff you do with with the, the animation, it's unbelievable, man. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, it's really, really, really good. Yeah. Yeah, man, you gotta bring it back out, man. Yeah. Bro, I tell you, you make them reels and TikToks and all that. I started doing. I actually started. 
I've been had the, uh, my audacity TikTok, right. but I've never put anything on it. And yeah, I, just I got the mine other day, too, I, I, but I'm, you know just, what? As we keep, you know, trial and error, we keep learning. Right, right, right. We just got to keep applying. That's been our word now, trial yeah, and error. We trial and error. We, we, we can't just be like, oh, we messed up here. Let's do something yeah. else. No, we try and try again, man. We keep going. You know what I mean? Right. And learn off the mistakes. Learning just keep learning off. off. I learned a lot. I learned a lot from you today. Definitely. You know what I mean? Um, the last words you had definitely spoke to me. I hope it spoke to y'all. Well, yeah. and I heard a great line, uh, or I either heard it or I read it, that um, who's the guy? Oh, um, the guy that invented the light bulb. Uh, well, yeah. Tom, Tom, uh, supposedly Edison. Edison. Right? Edison. Yeah. Edison. Supposedly Edison. Well, but Edison, a famous there was, Edison. There was light before yeah. Yeah. Edison. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, but what I had, yeah, well, well, there were a bunch, bunch of pe- people doing it, yeah. but I think his lasted long, longer. But uh, so they he said, got the credit. Yeah, right. They said well, they they asked him a question about um, why is it that. What kept you going after you? Because he, he said he had tried it and he had failed like I don't know, hundreds of times. And he said, no. He said I didn't fail. He said I just found out a hundred and fifty. Oh yeah, that yeah, yeah. Wouldn't work. That wouldn't work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Without failure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I seen that somewhere. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I read it somewhere. But I yeah, seen I read it before. too. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, yeah, I think no, it was him. Okay. Yeah. yeah, yeah, no, the same, same, same. <laughs> did you um, did you ever see? Uh, you ever saw him the tap for Brooks? Oh no. You ever seen that? I got his hair done. No. It just. Oh. Yeah. yeah. We're gonna have like to get a close up on that. I got this but, one like with the. Uh, I got this one with Brooks. Mm. So and then that's I saw you got the so I got what Brooks had on his own. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. You remember when we got all them tats? <laughs> yeah, he, uh, Brooks slept over my house that night. He was throwing up in the bushes. Yeah, we was all getting tats. tats. He got too many tats, right? Yeah, yeah. His yeah. arms back. That was at my aunt's house, right? Yeah, John's house. Yeah, um, we had one of the, uh, the t- he owns a tattoo shop now. Okay. But back then he was come to houses and whatnot, and he came to my aunt's house um, and just tatted us all up. We was all get drinking right, beers yeah, and whatnot right, yeah. and just getting tatted up. Brooks got the biggest tat. That's the one he got so on his back. He had on his back, right? Yeah, he had the uh, thousand strong. Yeah, he got one strong. after after basic. Josephine and I went to see him graduate, and so we were all three supposed to get one. Mm-hmm. And Josephine backed out. That was that one, or yeah, yeah, that was this this one. Oh, talking about tattoos. Brooks told me the story of a tattoo that you got somewhere special, my friend. Right here, yeah, right, right here on my my thigh. Yeah. But, what's that? What's up with that tattoo? <laughs> it's, well, it's. it's <laughs> A Mexican guy uh-huh. in the barracks yeah, hold on, we're almost done. did it with a needle and thread and oh, Indian wow. ink, and he just he just drew. He said, "Well, what do you want?" And one of the things, because I used to write a lot of poetry uh-huh. and stuff, and a lot of times at, at the end of the poem, I would I would draw a little stick figure like 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 how a kid draw, draws a flower, uh-huh. and then underneath there's a flower called a forget me now. Okay, uh, you can check out my photography. I'm at George Cordero Photography on Facebook, and I have a number of videos posted to YouTube. Just look up Ed Cord, and that would be E D space C O R D, and I have a number of videos that I've set up with my photography to a lot of popular music. Welcome back uh, for the Throw Podcast, episode 36. Sitting here with special guest, George Cadero, photographer, friend, consider him family and mentor. You already know I also have uh, two close peoples with me, CG Reunion. You already know A1 Stay Young and Sony Daz, E, Raw E. Went through a couple couple rap names. Yeah. <laughs> say Audacity. Audacity. Oh, I didn't say Audacity. Audacity. Right? Audacity. Yeah. I said them all as seven days. E, Sony Daz, <laughs> Mr. Stokes in the building. <laughs> You're right now. The Big E. Big E. Easy Jeezy. Yeah. Yeah. Like e, you know, Rasta. You should have taken them to the Big Easy movie. <laughs> right. <laughs> right, Big Easy. You already know, we appreciate y'all tuning in. Um, this is a question I ask all uh, guests on my show. It could be whether it's in life, photography, whatever. What is your thrill? My thrill is having been able to, for the last 25 years, be able to pay my bills and be able to have a decent living 
through my art. I think that anybody that's able to do that on any, any level Amen. is incredibly blessed. Word. Definitely, Word. definitely, definitely. What are some closing words you can give people viewing here in general? Any type of advice or whether it could be in anything, just something out of your life that you real, can Real, real simple. Uh, just, uh, just be you and anybody that's not with you isn't for you. So, don't pay them any, any mind. Just be true to yourself. And in doing that, you're going to find that you're going to attract the right kind of people. Appreciate those words. Hey, Angie, you want to say anything? Hey, man. Just can't wait to see you guys in the next episode. Another another good one down. I hope y'all enjoy it. You know what I mean? If y'all want to become a photographer or a filmmaker, I hope this helps. If you want to do anything else, I hope this helps, you know, to inspire you to, like, just go for your dreams and not stop. So that's that's what we about. So, yeah. audacity. How about you? <laughs> so, um, just go after your dreams. Like I've been, I've been chasing it for I don't know how long. My passion. I've never stopped. You know, music, film, photography. I love it. That's part of me. That's just like Mr. Ed here said. He he's able to retire from something that he loved to do. And I, I hope that one day I'll be able to do that. You know, Word it's up. inspiration Word for all of us. Word up. And check out, we got an uh, upcoming exclusive podcast with uh, Audacity in the uh, upcoming episode. Make sure y'all check that out. Again, this is For The Throw Podcast, episode 36. I go by MC Thrills. We got A1 Stay Young, Audacity, and Mr. Cordero signing out. Y'all have a blessed one. This money goes spent, I move just fine, trust me. So, so, so much work for y'all Elect me to be the dope man serving y'all You can spend your last five, it's worth it, y'all Cause So, so, so much work for y'all I know this economic depression hurting y'all But I got so, so much work for y'all Once the clientele pop and I'm setting up shop And knocking my competition